Let's boot this sucker up and get going. This is probably stuff I should have done pre-stream, right? All right. So let's just check that everything works. Um, click to run the bot. Ah, it just brings up the thing here, bot. Hey, it's doing something. Okay. Am I going to have issues clipping? Hang on, let me turn my monitor on. There, I can hear myself. Wow. Technology. So, let's do some updates first and I will explain where I've been. I think it's been, okay, I don't know how to update from here. I think I have to do GNOME software. Why can I, okay, GNOME software. Just quickly run that. Updates. Last check six weeks ago. Check again, buddy boy. I made some kombucha. That's disappointing, but I'm going to drink it anyway. It seems like if you do the second fermentation for too long, um, it'll just be gross. Oh, well, uh, I've been spending a lot of time trying to do kombucha stuff. With variable results, how do I remove the flat pack repo? Hey, cows. I'm streaming against Germa. Germa's on. Might as well just quit the stream. I gotta stop that flat pack error. Uh, flat pack remote LS. So yeah, I have a repo called my repo. Remote delete my repo and flat pack update. All right. And this should just have OS updates. Nice, let's get those two. So, for anyone watching the stream, like on YouTube or anything, and doesn't know me, then I have I have taken a break from the DOS programming bot. Uh, but I am back now. Um, strangely enough, I've become a bit of a DOSBox X developer. Um, I have to restart. Okay, let's just click that. Does that mean like OS restart? Have I locked myself into restarting? It doesn't look like it. Why did I stop developing DOSBot? Am I a coward? No, it's just like, you know. Anyway, so let's run this. This is running in a flat pack, I believe. And yeah, it, it just checking again. It does run. It hasn't broken. Um, but this isn't good enough. We need to write a test server. And we're going to do that in Python. Um, so let's open a terminal here. And I guess we'll have to open this and edit bot slash is it in here no um uh, he's streaming sonic adventure 2 that's pretty cool you know what? let's make this bigger there people can read it now oh shit we can use the tdf mode can we 
output true type font, please. There, look at this technology that we have now. True type fonts for DOS. Oh, it looks so good. Um, anyway, let's try and find the port and we're going to try we're going to change this to port 6666. Um, that's going to be our test port and let's W make that. Would I make a DOS game? No. C++ plus 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 16. Okay. Anyway, so if we do bot now, it should just fail to connect. Yeah, this is way too sour. Oh, but it's what I need. This is a sour project. Will I port Newling to DOS? No. All right. So let's do, you know, let's just dump. I didn't make vinegar. I made vinegary kombucha. Um, having it ferment for a second time was just too much for my month-long kombucha fermentation, uh, which is unsurprising, but oof. Okay, so we're going to make a server. We're going to call it test server. Um, and what are we going to do? I guess we're going to create a connection. Okay, let's just multiplex this. I think... The test.py had something to do with servers. Yeah, so let's just copy and paste test bot on limestone, what? Bind socket, accept connection, unbind socket. So we have all this stuff. Yeah, we'll just steal this, I guess. Um, we don't need to launch or kill DOS box or read the packet payload number. Um, so at the start, we're going to find the socket, um, accept the connection. Um, your cat is meowing at you. It's only one thing to do. Um, you know, let's just have this. There we go. So main is just going to single process IRC. So all this is going to do is just accept a connection and then we will just do fake IRC server. And in fake IRC server, what will we do? We probably want to get next packet, but that's not line based. So we're probably going to have to figure out how to read a line from it. Um, but let's just say print hello world. This is the fake IRC server. Uh, port 666 for the edge. Yeah. Um, and we probably... Yeah, we don't need that. Um, are we using random? Are we using select? Are we using OS? We're not using signal, are we? Are we using time? No. Are we using subprocess? No. So that should be fine. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. So let's do test server dot. All right, so you created the socket. Now let's try and connect to it. Um, that's a bit weird. It should immediately like close the socket. Um, did we find a bug already? Like if I kill it, will that time it out?
All right, let's try Alt X. That should get us out. No, did we find a bug? Uh, I don't like this. All right, let's just try doing S trace and seeing what happens. So we have the bot. Um, let's S trace the server. The bot can't connect because they launched it before. Um, so we've created the socket and we've accepted something. The call to accept is hanging. Um, in fact, it's still calling accept. So let's accept the socket. Accept the connection. Connection accepted. Actually, we can just probably just shove that there. Um, no Knights playing Tony Hawk's on PS2 with Hawthorn. No, no. So we have something hanging. That's not good. I don't understand why that is. Let's try that again. Let's see if it gets past accepting a connection. Um, it fails there. That's weird. Okay, let's try again. And that works now. All right, well, what if I undo my changes? And it works. Um, okay, whatever. That's probably not fine. Let's just try getting that ha to happen again. Um, so it hung for some reason before, and now it is not hanging. Great. So whatever, whatever, it's fine. So what's our fake IRC server going to do? Well, <clears throat> it's going to require you to log in first. Hey, Masaki. Do daemons really live in your computer? Yes. So when we're requesting a login, what does the, what is the ISC service supposed to do? Um, if we look at our bot code here, we can see that we're doing user, Nick, and I guess pass. Yeah, so we need the username, the password, and the Nick. Um, okay, so what happens if we shove other stuff in there? It doesn't matter. We're just testing that the bot behaves a certain way. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to test that the bot own the bot will send in this order username Nick and then the password. And in this case, the format should be something like this. So 
So this is what we're expecting from the bot. Which is good. So now we have to test that it actually sends that. So... Um, let's do expect user connection, expect Nick connection, um, expect password, um, and then we're going to user, and then we'll expect that the Nick is the same as the user somehow. Um, and then we will also expect that the password uh, is something. This should be read user, read Nick. Read password. And then we'll just dump that, I guess. Um, def read user connection. So we want to read a line. Should be this format. User A A A A A. No, four A's. All A should be the same. Um, and then We'll start with that and then we'll move on to Nick and password. Does this make sense so far? So let's just try the bot again, just to see if our code crashes. So how do we read a line? All right. Let's read a line from a connection. Oh, Firefox, you've been a bit slow today. Not very charismatic. Is that cat still under my desk? Hang on a second. No, I'm going to close my door then because it's getting cold. Oh, yeah, you're outside the, the door. All right. I did not say hi to Kat. I will say hi to her later. Cat's under my desk? More likely than you think. Yes, top 10 places a cat might be. All right, so let's see. We're going to search. We're going to go to duck, duck. We're going to go to python.org. Is it .org? I would assume it's .org. And let's search for um, socket connection read. Not helpful. All right, so let's go to docs. We want a reference. Library reference. And we want to search for socket. Um, lots of sockets here. I believe we have a socket. Great connection. Our connection is from accept. So let's try and find accept. All right, so we want to find read. That's receive. Receive from, receive message. We're looking for, can we just, are we Are we not able to just read something line buffered? It's okay if we can't. I just don't want to. Wouldn't it be cool if sockets did not exist? Why, what hell escape do you want? All right, receive. See the Unix page 
receive. Uh. Python buffered socket. All right, so there's some st stack overflow. All right, we're gonna have to implement our own buffering real quick. So line cause read line connection, read line connection. So what is it going to do? We're going to have our output line um, and we're going to have, I guess, a global buffer. Um, um, so do line buffer. Um, that should be bytes. What color am I, are my socks? I don't know, black. Uh, so we have a line buffer line buffer, uh, receive buffer, buffer of received data. I don't have any rants about sockets. I just said, what hellscape do you want to live in when you do not have sockets? And so for us, we're going to, um, we want to kind of split this into where we want to copy from buffer up to new, new line or end. Um, I mean, we're in Python. We have basically unlimited memory, right? So we want to copy from buffer up to new line. If buffer is empty, fill it. <clears throat> right. So this can be solved by doing, um, all right, there's a few cases here. Um, our existing buffer is empty. So if receive buffer equals Um, receive buffer equals con dot receive. Let's just put a big number there. All right. So that's, if it's empty, then we fill it up. Um, new line. We'll do line equals, um, receive, uh, sorry. NL. Uh, line feed equals receive buffer dot find b n gotcha um, so we fill up the buffer we find the n and then we do line equals receive buffer um, up to the line feed and then we want the receive buffer to be receive buffer line feed. That might need a plus one. I believe that would be plus one. Yeah. Now, what if this is zero? Um, Not sure. So we read a line, we read up to new line. So this assumes that there is a new line in the buffer. But if line feed, I don't even know what Python's find returns. Hang on. 
let's do some simulation. Uh, receive buffer equals B, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, N, um, H, I, J, K, limit of P. Great. Perfect. That's the alphabet. Receive buffer dot bind BN, give six. And then uh, receive buffer six should give us the up to F. Yep. And then seven should give us the H to P. Yep. Okay. So my code is correct. Now, what if we look for Z? Great. So if it equals negative one, while it equals negative one, no, wait, if it equals negative one, then we will, um, Then we will set the line to receive buffer. Um, we'll put line equals B up here. Receive buffer equals that. Line plus equals read line. There we go. And then we will return line dot decode um, UDF eight. Does that make sense? And yes, I know Python doesn't have tail call recursion, and this is going to throw the stack. All right, but I don't want to write freaking loops. All right, loops are hell. Okay, we're writing something simple here. We say, we start with an empty line. If the receive buffer is empty, we fill it. We look for the line separator. If we find it, we will return the line. Sorry, we will set the line to that. Otherwise, we will set the line to the entire buffer and then add on the read line. Then we'll add on the next attempt to read the line. Um, I guess we could add an attempts flag. Yeah, let's do that. Um, we also need to do global receive buffer. Um, attempts. Equals five. There we go. We'll do five attempts and we'll do read line attempts negative one. And then if attempts equals zero, um, just throw its raise. Can we just raise any exception? raise exception hello couldn't read line there we go does that code make sense it's pretty pretty thick um but we have I mean, we could rewrite that as a loop. Yeah, maybe we should do that. Let me try and think. Um, let's try rewriting this as a loop. Um, or I in range five zero, that will count down. No, we don't need to count it really. Is it range zero five? Then we will do if the receive buffer is empty, receive it. Find the buffer. If it's not there, then it will. We'll have the line variable up here. 
and that would be line dot append that and then we would return line dot decode df8 god no that's too much it's too much indentation and shit going on okay my small brain can't handle that i'm sorry other programmers at home my brain can only handle like one thing at a time so we have attempts if we run out of attempts we quit um we have a line buff we have a line we fill the line receive buffer if it's empty we look for n if it's in there then we pick then we you know take that out of the buffer that's our line otherwise we use the full buffer and then we um just repeat by adding on another call to read line does that make sense reads a line out of receive buffer refilling it if needed tries to read uses a chunk size of 5112 tries to um, will read a line up to chunk times attempts By default, that would be um, five times five one twelve. Now we could probably cut that down to be like four. Yeah, so I can remember that. Okay, um, so then we read line. Uh, line is line. We need to use format things for this. So we're going to read three lines. We're going to read the line three times. And let's see, is this going to compile? Let's just have a quick read through. We have our receive buffer there. It's a global persistent buffer. Um, we read the line with a connection. We have four attempts. If there's no attempts, we rain, we throw an exception. Um, what if there is no, what if the connection is closed? Um, I guess we would... <sighs> Shit. Um, I guess this is more of an expect line thing. Uh, oh, what if the connection is closed when we try and read a line? Well, I guess that only matters if the buffer is empty, right? Um, so if... Um, like, ideally, we should consume everything in the buffer. So... Connection receive. If receive buffer equals none, I believe that's what receive would return. We might have to break this out to fill buffer and eat buffer. Yeah, let's do that. Um, def fill buffer. Fill receive buffer connection. And we'll just put this code in here. Global receive buffer. If receive buffer um, is empty. Well, empty receive buffer. Um, so we have receive buffer there. If it's, um, if we're trying to read nothing or whatever, like if the connection is, uh, Python socket receive, if it's empty, then we will, uh, 
What does receive return? I guess it, if it returns zero, um, then we will raise an exception, unable to read buffer. There we go. And then we will have chomp buffer. Um, line equals chomp. Line equals chomp buffer. Sorry, chomp receive buffer. Sorry, we should probably be prefixing this with the actual name receive buffer fill. Receive buffer chomp. And we'll use the line feed for that. Um, and then we will have here. Receive buffer chomp. Um, all, I guess. I guess we'll put negative one there. Negative one can mean all of it. And then we can just put the line feed there. And then we can do if line feed equals negative one. Then we will just read the line again and add that. That makes sense. Def fills an empty receive buffer. Is there Python 3 for DOS? Probably why. reads data out of the receive buffer. If size is negative one, read the entire buffer. Uh, receive buffer chomp uh, length. Um, if size is. Yeah, okay, so we will do if size equals one, um, buff equals receive buffer. We need to make global receive buffer in both of these. Receive buffer equals that. Return buff. Else. Length. Buffer length plus one. There, does this code make sense? It looks like it makes sense to me. Yes, chomp. So we have a receive buffer here. We can fill it. Um, and that's good. We can read data out of it. Um, if the buffer is, if it's negative one, then it will read all of it. Um, if the receive buffer is empty. Yeah, so it'll read all of it if it's one, negative one, otherwise it will read the length stuff there. And then read line will do four attempts to fill, read a buffer. And then it would decode it as UTF-8. And then we have our lines here. Um, and then we should also do a further read line just to make sure that it crashes properly. All right, it's just going to uh, interpret len mb what's len nb what's what's len why do i have to compare it to len
receive buffer fill is missing the connection thing. Receive buffer chomp. Receive buffer fill. Okay, yeah. Alright, so it will hang if that, yeah, but what if it closes? All right, so this works exactly how we would expect it to. Um, but it is sending the lines backwards. Um, uh -huh. So what do we do? We send... What do we send first? Oh, it sends the password, then the nick. So password user nick. Okay. Pass word use oh whoops password user nick um read rc command and we're just going to return I think it should be command dot split by a space. Read RC command con. We might want to switch this up a bit. Password user Nick. And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, does Python actually have a cert built in? All right, um, assert password zero equals user. Sorry, no pass. Um, user equals user. Nick equals Nick. Um, and let's see if this works, this little test so far. User zero equals Nick fails. That's because I put that instead. Ah. Testing login. All done. Okay, now we need to also check that um Names equals user one. User two, user three, and Nick one. How many names do we enter? Four or three? Four. User four and Nick one. Um, how the hell do we assert these are all the same? For I in for name um, assert name equals user one. There. Check we get 
password first. Check we get user next. Check we get Nick next. Um, you should also check the length. So length password should be two. Um, length user should be three. I think, no, it should be five. And length Nick should be two. Check all the names are the same. I'm not checking password one. What am I gonna check it with? Spaghetti? Uh, I used to use C++, I don't anymore. All right, so we have our bot check. We have written some tests. Um, so we have require login. Um, let's send it a message of the day. Um, welcome to the test server. Your sysadmin is Jukia. Spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti. Spaghetti. I did actually get burnt out on C++, but it was the old C++, C++03. C++ has taken a long time to mature. Ugh. I don't like how I said that. Um, now we have to do a send line. Um, and send line should be fine. Um, that would be just on dot send. Sends a line of text to the client. Reads an IC command into multiple. So connection dot send, and then we're going to do um, uh, line dot encode UDF eight. Turn equal wait um buff equals line dot encode UTF eight. Um length equals we send send the buff if length buff doesn't equal length raise exception unable to send a line are you sure this isn't dos because this looks like dos right over here i'm writing my test scripts for it in python Um, that didn't catch the motor. Wait, what? Why didn't that fail? Oh, send line. Motor. Oh, fine. Uh, let's just send motor. Can we play DOS game? No, no DOS game. Shit. Okay, so after this part, we're going to be adding ping functionality. Um, I thought adding tests would take a lot longer. No, we're not playing the gorilla. Yeah, I'm testing it in uh, DOS written with Python by making a little fake IRC server here. 
Um, so I'm just going to quickly, I'll show you the code in a second, but I'm just going to quickly do our test server here. Send line. Okay. Okay, we get our message of the day there. And that's because I didn't put message of the day as part of the command. That's kind of cheap. Melted, melted. Welcome to the spaghetti server, melted. What is happening there? Why did I write Sarah? Why is it not splitting properly? Oh, it is, but it's buffering it. I don't want this to buffer. All right. I need this to send without buffering. I guess the packet thing is buffering. So what we might do is we might do a quick one second sleep. You can't buffer stuff over time, can you now, Python? No module name. Or is it os.sleep? There we go. Um, we change that to like micro sleep and only do that for like 50 microseconds. Oh, I think Python wants us to like do sleep 0 0.01 there, like a fraction. It was slightly confusing. Why did I learn DOS? Um, I don't know. My life choices are not always that best. And that's why. Can I flush it? Um, that's a good question, actually. Flush. No, I don't think it's, I don't think it buffers at all. I think it's just that the network stack is buffering it because it's so fast. Um, okay. So we have our bot here. It's able to log in. It's able to get our message of the day. Um, we'll just, you managed to log in. How cool. But get Okay, so now we have to test that the bot responds to pings. Um, test ping. Testing ping. We probably shouldn't have this loop either. Um, so testing ping means that um, sends a ping and expects a pong. So let's do send line connection ping, um, hello world. Um, and then we want to do response equals read IRC command con assert length response equals two assert response is can I just like assert that it equals, do tuples equal each other in Python? Oops, too many equals. Okay. Pong, hello world. Um, and we also need to do timeouts for this, unless it's just gonna hang. Oh, we won't be that mean. Okay, so it's failing at testing the ping. So now let's implement the ping response. So we have our bot code here. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is like, just put all this, we're gonna jam the login stuff into a single pack. 
Let me open up Vim. This is so bright. Okay. So we're going to change pass message to login message. And then we're also going to just load it up with the rest of the login stuff. And then let's do pass message. Um, and then where's the... login message and then we'll jump the state loop. I think this should be fine. Um, so next thing we want to do state loop just gets packets terminates it, then prints it, then I'm not sure if I'm winning. Um, but we do need to refactor some of this. Yeah, so we have get packet there. Um, and bail error. All right, let's just check that this still works. Click things, okay. But, all right, so that still works. It still works. See, now I know that it works. All right, so let's see. Let's have a look at our assembly here. Um, we're not going to deal with fault injection. Uh, that's a lot of to do stuff there. I'm going to put that at the top of the file. And then we'll see if that still compiles. Um, I don't know if the code will work. The MTCP code will work with DJ, uh, GCC. Oops. Oh, it's hung. Uh oh. There's a hang that's happening there. I'm not sure why or where it's happening. Don't say that, Kaz. Okay, so... We, so in our state pass thing, we want to send one thing, but it is a big headache, isn't it? Yeah, same Misaki. So let's refactor this out into send packet. And I guess what we want to do here with send packet is this is going to be a subroutine. Oh, isn't that pretty cool, huh? Um, yeah, so the reason why this was a, a, a trouble Oh, we also need to do fault injection too. Let's put a big to do up here. Fault injection. We're not touching proprietary word perfect software.
Okay, so send packet is going to take AX equals length, sorry, DX equals length, um, and uh, AX, wait, no. AX equals message. BX, I don't know what the calling convention for DOS is. Um, we can just push it on the stack. Why don't we do that? Um, or should we use registers for this? Accessibility is not a main goal. Um, just quickly look up 8086 registers. Um, because not all of these are general purpose ones. AX, BX, CX, DX. All right, so we're gonna use AX is the message and BX is the length. You go in the garbage, Kaz. Sorry, a bit angry at you for saying that. <laughs> um, don't say, don't, don't ever do that again. Is this there, is there accessibility software for, you know what? I'm going to use the stack because um, that's going to make things so much easier. Yes, there is accessibility software for DOS. Um, yes, I have tried it out. So we're going to push our login message length and push the login message. Um, because we use length first and then that, then we're going to do call send line or send packet. And there. Um, so we're going to, first of all, pop DX and then we will do pop SI. And so this should work fine. Are we ready for things to really fuck up now? Um, Yeah, let's try this. Oh shit, is this running? No. <laughs> okay, so that just kills D DOSBox. It doesn't know what to do. Let's try again in vague hopes that it does something something better, but I'm going to assume no packet too big. Okay. Wouldn't it be great to run a Twitch bot from a floppy disk? That was, or is the goal. Let's try flipping those around. Why not? Um, oh shit. Shit. Uh, I think I messed up here. I think I'm popping the return address. I don't think you're supposed to pass shit on the stack. Damn. Uh, that's fine. We will just move AX equals message and BX can be the length. Let's see if that works. but I'm not preserving my register. I want to push stuff on the damn stack. No, this is not fair. 
I do have a floppy disk writer and I do have a floppy disk. Okay. Um, let's open up our documentation for how call works. Um, because what's happening, I think, is that I'm pushing values onto the stack. Then I'm, I should be, you can't use the stack to pass stuff. Pathetic. So let's move the X, AX, and then we will move AX login message length. Um, move BX login message. Um, all right, the Whatcom thing should be preserving registers. So this should also be move SI BX. Okay. I think DOS programming would have been better had Twitter existed then. What? You think RMS would have made an anti-Twitter? RMS doesn't make things. Uh, shit. This should be BX equals AX. All right, let's see if this works. Um, after I finish writing some stuff there. Oh shit, I could read it from the stack. Oh, but that's horrible. Sorry, I got confused. Instructions unclear. Opened the wrong file. Okay, that actually worked. Um, super cool. So we've made our uh, send packet routine. Should probably prefix it with something, huh? There's also get packet. So that's send packet and there's also get packet and terminate packet and print packet. And yeah, so we're gonna have to work on that because that's currently what's happening in the loop. Um, then we have state disconnect and then the bail error. And this is all kind of in the same thing. This is a little spaghetti already, um, but that's okay. You might have to end up using multiple assembly files, huh? Ho, 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 ho. Um, but what I do want to do is kind of detach the state stuff here. Um, so state loop, this should be call um, print packet. And then we will have print packet here. And then we will just return. Oh, but that also jumps to state loop. Okay, so this is kind of intertwined with our state machine and that's not good. So let's see. We have get packet. 
which should probably be at the start of the loop, terminate the packet, print the packet, and then we have to dispatch the packet, I think. So yeah, this actually makes sense. That is stuff that happens in the receive loop. But we probably do want uh, some of this to be like, um, I don't know, are we ever going to have to, no, we're not going to have a situation. This is our event loop. Right. Um, event loop. So we're going to say receives packets and dispatches things to do. Um, and then we're going to have to to do check packet. Um, we're going to have to buffer it into lines. Um, which isn't good. Uh, we're going to have to loop through for each line and then do something with each line. So, mm, this is the same issue as with the test thing. Um, we might have to turn this code inside out a bit. Um, so state start, Okay, so for our loop, we're going to have to buffer a line of text. And so what's going to happen is, we're going to have to get a packet, terminate the packet, um, and then we're going to have to Um, after we terminate, should we be messing, messing with the termination? I, uh, I guess maybe we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to copy it to the line buffer. then we're going to have to dispatch when line has been copied or quit if line is full. Does that make sense? Jump state loop. What is this for then? Receive new packet. That happens up there though. Why is this here? If we remove this, because that's never actually happening, that's dead code there. Yeah, so right now, Yeah, so we're going to have to do some copying. Um, let's just check that this works. 
um, something that we can do now quite easily. Uh, I didn't actually, I don't know what button I pressed there. Space X, I don't know. Let's try W making it again. Okay. Oh, I hit alt something. Super alt. Um, X. So super alt X. I think space alt space X. That's weird. So alt space brings up that menu. All right. So we need line buffering now, which means we need a buffer for our lines and we're going to need to copy and dispatch. And these are the various states. So we have send packet, we have state pass, then we have state loop and that will either it's very intertwined with packet handling here. Terminate packet. Um, this should probably be copy buffer. Instead of terminating. Um, So let's, let's crack out, let's try and break this down into some problems here. Um, so after we get a packet, we want to copy line. And this is going to append to existing line buffer. If we reach N, while appending um, dispatch line. If buffer is full, um, quit. Uh, why is sub functions written with this? That's just, uh, that's just to tell me it's part of state loop. Um, it doesn't make much sense. Ping is not a state either. It's a response. So this is a state machine. Um, and this is intended. It's a bit weird. It mixes up some logic and also the dispatching. So the idea is that we have state start here. And the first thing is that we have state auth. Um, actually, we'll just write here. Authenticate before we start dispatching the stuff. Um, incoming messages. And then when we do state loop, we're going to get a packet, then buffer it into a line and do something based on that. Um, so this is kind of like an event loop. Um, let's see what's in this, these links, these viruses you've sent me. You've sent me viruses, dude. What's happening to my computer? Oh, sorry, I just... Wrong paste. Okay, so LD fails. Um, modified 2009. What do I... Uh... What do I want to care about this for? 
The BSDR 1.2.9 fails to build with GTC4 due to aliasing. Um, what C flags have they got? Pipe. Um, okay. O2. That makes sense. March. Yeah. Emit frame pointer. Um, I guess if you don't need that for debugging, you don't have to. F tracer. Um, what's that? M32, MMX, MSAC. Wouldn't that be in the March? Fun roll loops, peel loop, unswitch loops, web. Um, not sure. After reload, module shed. A lot of... A lot of very specific C flags here. Yeah, DOS! Oh, it's nice and cute watching people from 2005 play with their 32-bit machines. <laughs> okay, back to DOS. Or assembly programming. Um, now, because we're writing assembly and I haven't implemented coroutines... Um, there's two ways we can kind of go about this, but the thing is that this DOS bot is going to have to be doing multiple things at once. So any state needs to be handled separately. Like we can't just, you know, if, we, if we're interacting with a user or something, we can't just, you know, say, wait for user response because, you know, then it won't talk to anyone or ping the server. So we'd have to implement some kind of virtual um, thing. You can do magic preemptive stuff in DOS. I'm just struggling with the assembly. So I'm trying to do simple things. So what are we going to do here? Uh, this is difficult. All right. We want to append to a line buffer. So we need a line buffer. Um, I guess we can just store that in static memory. Um, no, that's const. Um, I don't need coroutines. It would just be nice to have you know, like a sync programming, not something assembly is well suited for, ah, doing some stretchies, big stretch. Okay. So we need a line buffer. Um, and we need to be able to append to it. I'm not going to write that in assembly because I've read it before and I know what it is. Um, I, I enjoyed this stretch. It was okay. So we need a line buffer and so append. We're going to do append line buffer. So we need, um, the packet is going to be ax equals packet pointer dx equals packet size um we also need um line buffer pause and we probably need line buffer 
end so we don't go over it. I'm not going to do push push ups for you. And then we need to also, um, if we go past and quit and stop copy on N. Now this looks complicated. And that's because it is, but that's okay. We have the power of human brains. Um, we also probably want to terminate it um, and print packet. Hmm. All right, we're just gonna have to rip the bandaid off and remove the printing and terminating. Ouch. Um, so we're gonna have to try and actually no, I'll move it down into the attic, which people often refer to as down into and not up. So that can be for reference. All right, so the first thing we need is a buffer. We have the packet pointer. So let's put a little X for that. Um, we need a line buffer and a pointer to the line buffer, which both means that we need data. And this can't be in const, this has to be in data. So how are we going to quickly check this? Ah. Uh, we need a buffer and the buffer position and the buffer end. So line buffer, line buffer pause, line buffer end. Um, all right. All right. Um, and so Let's quickly look at the memory maps and see what sections mutable stuff is in. I think it would be in data. So data would be OC25, I think. Or is it in C8502? Shit, I don't know. Um, class, data, data. All right, so we're gonna put it in the data section or should it be in the BSS section? Mm. Uh. The BSS section is kind of where we would put this probably. No, the, well, yeah, kind of. So this is all gonna have to be Let's do section, I think it's BSS. I would not convert Python code to basic. Search up how to Allocate an array in assembly language. I'm not gonna allocate from DOS. Wait, what? 
do I want to allocate from DOS? I mean, I just need 512 bytes. <laughs> I just need some bytes, man. Array L. Array 1. What the fuck are you doing here? Make it impossible to use arrays bigger than it has a simple time virtual address space? Ah, uh, You have gone so past fast god. So fast past god. So far past god. Okay, now it's in section BSS and we're looking for resby. Okay, so there's some kind of explanation here. Yeah, data and BSS, we're going to just use BSS for this. Um, we're going to use res, res B, I don't think I could rewrite the Quake engine, even if I tried. I can't do it. You don't understand. Okay, how do I times eight DB zero? So do I want to do times five one twelve DB zero? Endianness. That's probably not important here. probably not important. Res B by 112. DB is double byte. Okay, so let's try and build this. Object format can only handle 16 or 32 byte relocations. Um, okay. I need to do DW there, double word. Okay, it seems to work kind of. Okay, it seems to, let's just see if it still passes the tests. What's Among Us? Okay, but. Bot freezes, that not good. That's probably because we need to go to jump state loop.
Maybe? Not sure. Let's try putting back the print format stuff. I'm not playing Among Us. Toes? What? Cat toes? Are you okay? So is this just like frozen? Yeah, it looks like that. Is it hanging for the same reason as before? Okay, so... I guess we could open up a debugger to see if this is working, but the best way to see if something works is to use it. I say to myself, denial. So. What we're going to do is Print line, um, print line buffer. And what we're going to do is push line buffer um, night cats cats. What the hell is AX? Right, line buffer, and then we need to calculate the length. Um, we'll just say 10 for now. And we'll just see if this prints random garbage all over the screen. Although we should probably terminate it. Ah, uh, shit. That's a bit confusing. We'll put the terminate before the line buffer. And then here we will move, um, AX will be the line buffer and move DX will be, I don't know, five. And we'll just null terminate it. So we're now gonna work with the line buffer here. We have this function that maybe gives us a line here. Um, if we if we copy if we copy but don't have n or full buffer, jump back to get packet there. So let's see if this kind of works. We should see some consistent garbage each time we get a new package. Packet. Thanks for the follow that onion. And it is hung. I'm not going to, I'm not going to figure out why it's hanging today. Okay. Bot. All right. We have smiley faces. That's good news actually. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy just a bit of the packet, just a tad. 
So the first thing we want to do is copy five bytes. Um, this seems like hell. That's okay. Hmm. This is a lot to take in. My brain might be a little bit fried, but I'll keep going. Because we're doing a lot of work in a pen line buffer. In fact, this is kind of going to be um, a bit of a loop here. This is actually not so much state loop, but state get line. And then we would have state dispatch or something like that. Um, now let's just make state get line, state get packet, and we'll fall through there. State append line. Um, state terminate buffer. State print buffer state dispatch and it should be back to start get packet append line terminate they'll go in there state print line and then we will jump back to state get line And then bail error can be up here. In fact, that's just ASM quit, I think. Yeah, bail error is just ASM quit. So we don't need that. All right, this is making a bit more sense for me. We have ASM run, ASM quit, send packet, state start. Then we have get packet and append line. And if that doesn't work, it'll have to go back and get some more packet. So whenever we get a packet, we'll append it to the line and then we will print the line. And if any of that fails, we will disconnect, I guess, or state fail. Does that make sense? Um, I don't know if we did BSS or data here. Why is your mind fried? D group class BSS. And then this should be section underscore BSS. 
So let's try and continue that. It should be speed good packet. Do you like my approach with having a state machine here? Um, don't know. Maybe compatibility. So we've broken our problem down into a series of steps that we can slowly implement. And then we terminate it. So the idea is that we only get to print line if we have successfully read something. So append line should We'll just make that 513. I don't know, we can, it's fine. We'll just do 511 then. So after we append the line, uh, we're gonna have to deal with that null terminate. Um, So we want to append, what are we going to do? We're going to copy packet to line buffer until line buffer full, we encounter an N. Now, If line buffer is full, quit slash exit. Um, so hang on. We might not actually have either of those if we don't have a full line yet. So copy packet to line buffer until line buffer is full. So we want to copy packet to line buffer until, uh, sorry, append packet to line buffer if full, um, quit. If we found, found an N, continue. If otherwise, um, they get packet. All right, so now we have to think a little bit how we're going to do this. So we have line buffer pause down here. So what we should probably do here is, um, Reset line buffer pause. Um, and we should probably do that here, right?
state next line. Um, reset the line buffer pause. So we'll have to do that there. <coughs> and line buffer pause will just be used here and here. Um, I mean, we could probably use a register, but like, we're in 8086, we don't have registers to spare. Do you get what I'm saying? So we have the packet pointer and the packet size, which means that we want to append packet size to line buffer until we're going to need to clamp this. Um, so we have to append packet to line buffer. That means we're going to have to move bytes from packet start to line buffer pause count equals, well, it can't be more, max would be line buffer pause minus line buffer length, right? Um, and then there's also packet max, which is um, packet size. So this is the maximum size of our buffer here. We have two maximums and we kind of want to be able to fit them either. Okay, hang on, let me just simplify this. We have a buffer and we want to fit packet size into it. No, we don't. We want to packet size is the highest amount of looping. I think. Oh shit. Hang on. Um, this should probably jump back to state append line, right? But that means we would have to preserve AX and BX. Oof, this hurts a bit. We could probably use the stack here, but the idea is this, we get a packet, then we append the line. We want to append, we want to, the, these maximums are hurting my head. Um, we append a line, we null terminate it, we print it, and then we go back to append line and append line runs and runs and runs until we need a new packet. So um, get packet, append line, we'll go back to get packet and then get packet might. Hmm. Is, a, is this too much complexity? Um, probably we want to start, we're going to loop, we're going to get a packet and then for each packet, we're going to append it to our line buffer. So get packet and append line are intertwined because there's a feedback loop there. Um, we will append line and possibly get more packets. So these two 
are kind of intertwined. And then once we have the line, we're going to do something with it and then go to next line. So we would probably want to push the packet onto the stack at some point, maybe. Um, but let's just think about this. Uh, we want to copy bytes from packet to, bu to line buffer. We want to stop copying if byte is n. Stop copying if we run out of packet. Stop copying if we run out of buffer. Um, that should be quit if we run out of buffer. Um, that should be jump to state get packet if we run out of buffer. Does that make sense? We want to copy until we find a new line or we run out of buffer or packet. Okay, that's a little bit hard to do. Is there a way we can kind of simplify this? I think those are the three cases that we're interested in while we copy stuff. Yeah, does that make sense? Um, hmm. So we copy bytes and we want to stop if the line buffer or the packet buffer is full. Now, obviously the last two are an upper bound on how much we can copy. Oh, cat wants to come in. Come on. You gonna come in? Hey. Yep. Hello. Yep, you're inside. You've made it in. Mm -hmm. You might be hungry, cat. That's too bad because we're doing DOS. So, Kodo, I think I need your big brain energy. We can kind of um, figure this out after the fact by comparing things. Yep, come on. Mm-hmm. It's okay, buddy. There, rub, rub against my foot, maybe. I might have to feed her. Maybe, unless she settles down. So, we wanna stop copying if the byte is N. So that's a condition on the data. Oh, we also have to remember the position of the packet. Where do we free the packet? Hang on a second, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit confused. Receive new packet, then we'll pack it, get the packet pointer, um, current receive packet. So do we only have one packet? Um, yep, out you go cat. You have more people to bother. Um, 
All right. Current receive packet gives us our, all right, so we only have one packet at a time. All right, that's good. So the C code is managing the packet. We only have one packet. So we might have to We want to remember the packet position for later. Yep. So I'm just trying to figure this out. So, uh, we want to stop copying if the byte is N. Um, no idea how we're going to do that yet. Um, but we also don't want to overflow the buffer or read outside the packet buffer. So I guess we're just going to copy as much as the lowest maximum. Like if our, if we have one byte left in either, then we only want to copy the most from there, right? Um, copy minimum. Um, of either length. Um, and then we stop copying. If we hit end of packet, jump back to state get packet, we hit end of buffer, quit. That seems reasonable. So AX equals packet position. DX equals packet size left. So we would increment the packet size left, or would that be? Hmm. I have to think about this, how we're going to store the offset, because if we store it as an offset from the start or something, I'm not sure, but we need to, actually write down our dependencies here. So call state get packet has nothing, no persistent data. Append line needs the packet pointer, packet size, um, line buffer, line buffer length, line buffer pause. Um, this should probably Um, reset the line buffer pause here. After we're done with it, jump back to, and we need to remember packet pause, packet length. So we have those kind of four things. And whenever we switch states, we need to kind of pass it to it, right? So if we call back to state get packet, it passes it by using a global variable. So these are passed using globals. Um, How is packet pause and packet length passed in? From get packet there, we do AX and 
um, DX, obviously. However, um, we need to preserve that for the next call. So we could use a global for that. Um, yeah, why not? We could use a global variable and have this set the global variable. Does that make sense? So instead of using registers, we would use global variables for this. Alternately, we could use um, a stack frame. Um, what do you think? I guess a stack frame might work better because that would store all our state on the stack. And that would give me a reason to use the stack. Um, uh, I don't really gain anything except experience. <clears throat> this is a DOS spot. This is all work for nothing. Um, probably wouldn't be using push or pop. I'm not sure. I was thinking of just reading offsets from the stack. Using the stack as storage space. Just push. But yeah, this state append line requires four pieces of data that are um, handled elsewhere or modified elsewhere. So packet pause and packet lengths are modified here, but they're also resets packet pause, packet length, um, and this code down here resets line buffer pause and line buffer length. Does that make sense? So we have data in our, if we use the stack, then we can kind of say, this is the data that is in our state machine that is handled by the state machine. So I guess we're going to start planning this out so on our stack, we're going to have packet pause, packet length, remaining, and same with the line buffer pause. And then the global, we're going to have uh, line buffer and line buffer length. That shouldn't be, uh, I guess. So we have four things on the stack and the state machine will work through it using these variables. And 
the user code will only be exposed to the line buffer. Does that make sense? So we have local variables. Oh, pog, 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 pog. Um, but the first thing we want to do is start reading. How do we copy some, how do we, is there, is there an instruction for um, copying shit, but um, stopping if, something is the data. Um, I know that just sounded like word salad, but don't worry. We want to copy on a condition. Um, oh, is this it? Move mask B, no. Move S, there's move S, which is for strings, and then there's repeat. And there's move SB. And we don't have conditional copy. Oh, is that why people like to conditional copy? Um, yeah, I know about C move. CMOV. Hmm. Okay, so let's think about this differently. Um, no, it doesn't have C move. So we might have to split this up into two parts. Um, or we can just copy, we can be, we can be slow and we can copy um, and check if there's an N each time. That'd be cool, right? Um, so we're going to copy byte by byte. And this seems so optimal, doesn't it? Like we could copy the entire buffer and then but then we'd have to start shifting stuff. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know there's a, I know, I know it's, I know, I know, I, I, I specifically know I need Pentium Pro for that. Like I know. I know, I know. Um, I know. There's a loop here. Maybe loop could help. If X and negative CX. Maybe loop can save us, but we might just have to do a just a regular loop. Oh, they've got to roll. Why am I in the S section? Let's go back up to L. Loop again coding example loop e again loop again all right let's try and find a loop 
better than risk V already? No, you don't understand. Oh, this hurts me. So there's loop if equal. So can we do a loop read? I mean, what we could do is just do a two pass where we um, find the N and then copy it. I don't know. I mean, that's what we would have to do, right? Unless we just check N each time. I mean, I know this isn't, I don't know anything about the pipeline used here. Conditional transfers. Table one to 10, um, loop. Uh, that's right. We could look it up. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand. Find next. Yeah, that's definitely not going to work. That's just more copy stuff. If it's just... Yeah, so loop is just a single instruction and it works based on the counter register. Um, and we can't really use that unless we're going to like... Uh, I mean, we could like use that to find the N but even then we have to iterate through it. x86 is cute don't you agree i mean this is just risk stuff like i'd have to do you know what let's actually open up a web compiler and see what a compiler would generate um because now i'm curious so we have our function we have um we have we have a string and we have a buffer. Yeah. All right. Um, can you just leave it out there? I'm streaming on the internet. Remember to set the right M. Don't worry. I'm all M. So what the hell are we writing? We're writing a, not memcop. We're doing, um, While you cannot say hello to my mother. All right, so we have a car buffer, 128. We have a car source, 64. Um, we have an int length, and we're going to say that, you know, our buffer, so, sorry, we'll set the buffer to 64 and the source, and we'll say the length is actually like, I don't know, 32 um, and we'll just drop this in int main i'm not saying hi to a few because you're gonna try and date my mom and it's really creepy and i don't like it all right so what we're going to do is we're going to copy data from buffer while okay sorry that would be our um, buff pause equals buffer car 
source pods equals source while okay then we're just going to do do um buff pause int max len equals 32. We'll just we'll just not check for the length thing right now. So we'll just do for um while buff pause plus plus doesn't equal n and sorry we have to make um car n pos equals buff pos plus 32 buff pos doesn't equals n pos um shit no it's just new line And then we'll do um, source pause plus plus equals buff pause plus plus. There, why are you not compiling? How dare this code not compile? This genius code. Um, what's the error? Buff pause was not defined. How about you don't say shit to me ever again, compiler? Um, well, it's not using RN. I don't think. I'm pretty sure it's N, but if it's not, we will find out. It's CRL, CRLF. Um, <laughs> um, okay. I don't know who generic keeper is. Um, I have a solution to this and it's called ignore the CR. Um, but yeah, we will. Google that. Actually, that's that's this CRLF might actually be good for us because that means uh, we can just replace the CR with a null with a null. So you know what? That's actually fine. We can use the we can break, we can split on the LF and then set the CR to null. See, the ISC developers knew what they were doing. All right, so let's look at my code here. Um, does it actually do output? I don't even know if this code is right. Hang on a second. Um, Um, source. I'm not doing the, the M yet. Um, shit, I don't want to save shit. Why would I want to save this? All right. Hello, N there, what's up? Compilation failed. You failed. So this should print hello. And if I could write C for the life of me, then what the fuck? Um, is it going to show me my printf? Oh, it's just compiling it, isn't it? Hang on. Let's see if this actually works.
Okay, so that works. So, well, let's just not, let's not look at that right now. We're going to look for um, 8086, it would be 386, 686, 32. Can you not compile for for this? Oh, I do need to do that. M um, eighty eighty six is it? I'll just try it on my thing here. It's, just, it's probably not a cross compiler. What do we have? Yeah, so this isn't for 32 bit. This is just 64 bit. So we need a 32 bit compiler. Yeah, no, we need a 32 bit compiler. Does not support x86 instruction sets. Yes, yeah, so I need a 32 bit I probably just have a 32 bit compiler. What do you mean? Oh, I see. You're angering me. All right, fine. But you have to understand this isn't 16 bit code. Does it actually have M16? What if we do M16? No, it's about the same. All right, whatever. Um, so we have this. Uh, this is actually uh, GNOME 2 or Mate. So hello, Ransom32. I can just tell it to not do any optimizations. It's fine. Look, no optimizations. Oh, okay. Lots of optimizations. I just need to understand what this is, what this means. Hi, Gordy. Um, no, it's not LXD. LXD is pretty cool though. Um, okay, so let's look at this code here. Hey Kiwis, did I get raided or something? What's happened? Did someone post my stream somewhere? Yeah, so um, Mate Desktop is a fork of GNOME 2. When GNOME 3 came out, people were like, uh-uh, and they forked it to make My activity feed filtered. I don't know. What is a Viking? Explain it to me, please. All right, so what does it do here? It moves. Okay, please don't allocate stuff on the stack. There, that's a bit better. Stack space isn't free, you know. Um, L4 is that copying thing, that setup, that adds EX, 
So this is using the stack to store stuff. Oh, cool. What do you develop? Intel ASM syntax. Okay, yeah, I want that. Demangle identifiers. You did not pay for it? What? Okay, so we're looking here to see how to do this loop here in assembly. JavaScript developer. Wow, I saw like a stack space isn't free. Look, this is DOS, okay? Nothing's free. Nothing comes for granted. We're trying to figure out how to assembly a loop. What's your problem? Um, I saw like an eight hour video the other day on YouTube of it's by a guy like Brocode and it's like learn JavaScript and it's just like this eight hour explanation of how to use JavaScript. I was like, I'm gonna have to watch that sometime so I can become modern. Okay, so L2. Don't know why you did the labels back like that, GCC. All right, so the loop here reads something and then it jumps to L3 or L4. L3, L4, so L3 is the end and L4 is the copy. Default libraries for DOS to use TCP sockets. No, uh, what you have to do is use MTCP and the NE2000 thing. Um, these are a bit of a headache to set up. But it's, it's easier nowadays, I say. Is this not comparing? It's not, where's the compare? Oh, is that comparing? Yes, yeah, so that's, what? Oh, okay, that just falls through. So what's the optimization like? What's the cool way to do this? Okay. So you have inlined this all. So it checks if it's equal to what? What have you done here? I see you're using an offset into the array. But I am perhaps a little more confused than I should be. Try with and instead of end end. GCC in O0 is doing naive stuff. Yes, that's what I want because I'm naive. Okay, so here, try different optimization levels. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying O3 now, the big optimization level. So I see we've allocated our buff and all that at the bottom. Uh, we start from main, this is the preamble. Um, we move the buffer to DL, what the hell is DL? Whatever, it doesn't matter, it's probably a register. Then we compare it to 10, and then if it's equal to 10, then we just jump to the end. Um, otherwise we jump to L3, which compares the length, I guess. No, it stores the thing. Oh yeah, thanks, Gordy Nicky. Um, oh yeah, this is hexadecimal. Is that hexadecimal? 
Wow. So yeah, it's comparing the new line, but it should be doing a length check, no? I mean, there is the check here. This 32, I suppose, it's incrementing, it, it's using an offset here instead of actually using pointers. So using an offset seems to be the right idea. So if you compare this block plus with N and it is N, it moves to the end. Yeah, um, L13. Oh, is this? Jump L3. Has this reordered it so it's going to write out of bounds? Or what has it done here? It's doing the, it's doing the length check after it writes. Hmm. That's a little bit weird. From what I can see, it checks if the first byte is n and if it is it quits otherwise it will copy it um and then save it and then compare it and then if it is out of bounds it will quit i see what's happened here Now I see what's happened here. It's turned this into a do while loop. Um, or something, I don't know. This is, this is, let's, what does it do on x86? Does it do about the same thing? Yeah, it looks to be doing the same thing. Um, yeah, I think it's turned it into a do while loop um, because these are um, these are incre these are post commenting, and I guess it knows that source pause. And buff pause are not equal at the start. All right, whatever. <clears throat> so let's also look at the stack here. Um, all right. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I don't, I don't care anymore. I don't care. I'm not trying to understand compilers. Line buffer length. So we need some local variables. Um, so we need to figure out how to move with offsets from the stack. So I guess we're going to have to set the base pointer to be um, are we supposed to set up the base pointer for ourselves? I think we are. What's the calling convention there? Has it set up a stack for us.
Okay, so I think what we'll do is when we enter the state start, we're going to drop the base pointer by um, each of those are going to be like 16 each. Yeah, we're on a 16 bit machine. So 16 times four. Um, and then we want to copy um, line buffer and length to that. And then when we ASM quit, state quit, state quit. Let's make this a new thing. We can do state quit, um, jump, ASM quit, but we're also going to pull up the stack base plane here as well. And then here, we're going to store AX and DX in local bars. Um, we're going to read plus store line buffer pause length. From stack and this will have the line here, I guess. This should be line buffer left or remaining. Packet remaining. So we'll just call that packet rem. Are those going to be offsets? Hmm. No, because we're going to mutate those. And then we're going to reset um, the line buffer, pause and line buffer length and jump back. Okay. So let's just see how badly this stuff that hasn't actually modified anything has ruined things. And then we'll start with the base pointer. Okay, that actually works. Good. Um, so we're going to, what's 16 by four? That sounds like 64, right? Um, so sub base pointer 64. Do we need to set up the base pointer? Probably not. We'll just assume it's from the previous stack. You can use nickname. Oh, that's interesting. So cool. So does sub work on the register? That should be fine. Um, and then we'll just do add base pointer because the stack grows downwards, I think. We'll see. If it doesn't grow downwards, then we have a problem. Pretty sure it grows downwards. Okay. So that didn't crash. Good. So we're going to have to figure out what the offset from the base pointer is. So this would be offset 
um, zero, four, eight. Sorry, did I do 16 times four? Why did I write 16 times four? That should be two times four or, uh, yeah. I think so. I don't know. Um, Sixteen bits is that's two bytes, isn't it? So that would actually be two, four, eight. And so that would be the offset. So we actually want to that's six there. So we actually want to drop it by eight bytes. I think. And then we want to move um, line buffer pause and move line buffer rem to um, BP. I'm just doing weird syntax here, move BP. I might have to move it to a register first. Although I'm not sure. That should be four minus six. All right, so let's see how we actually do a move properly because I can't remember any of this. Why am I having such a hard time finding shit? Such a low-res JPEG they decided to print on their book. Do you write any bots, Gordy? Register operands in move instructions. Oh shit. I should be setting the stack pointer too. Uh, move. Um, and we don't need to really, we don't need to care about any of that, do we? Because we're just, oh yes we do. because we're going to be popping the stack. Uh, move stack point to base pointer. Okay, that seems fine. So let's see, move. Recognize 28 different moves. Uh, is there going to be one of those for me? Am I going to have one of the moves? Move destination source. So, uh, memory from register. So we want to go from immediate to memory. I think that's what we want. Effective addressing. Okay. 
God, so much moving. Um, we're going to look for, I have a bookmark for this demo. No, not there. Yeah, I think this is memory address computation. So, I think we can specify an offset. We're looking for an indexed addressing. Accessing a stacked array with based index. So we have the base register um, and we have an index register and a displacement. So array zero. Okay, so displacement, the index, what is the displacement used for there? All right, so the displacement here is mixed with the base register to get to the start of the array, and then you use the index. So we just want the displacement and base without the indexing. So we're looking for based addressing. So I'm never going to get over it not having like easy to understand syntax. All right, so I think it's just negative four or something. Where's my file? I have to have my file. I think it would be BP minus whatever. Yeah. And that specifies that that's an, a memory location. And then here we would do the same here. So negative four is the position, negative six is the remainder. Is that going to work how I think it is? Hang on a second. The base pointer, yes, that is going to work. So let's just put this upside down how it, how it got intended. There. W make that and hope it doesn't cry. And of course it freezes because I had shoddy stack manipulation happening before. Line buffer rim. Len. Operation size not specified. Um, line buffer rem. Is it SB move byte, double byte? I think it's double byte. Um,
Um, not sure what this area, I mean, I know what this area is. Um, it's not specifying the operation size. And I need to tell it to move double bytes. Double bytes. Uh, you have to use a register anyway. Okay. Okay. Are you sure? Move DB, maybe we could try DB. It looks like I'm going to have to have an intermediate that upsets me. Double bite. No, this looks like to be, this looks like a lost cause. Um, Word is the am I using the term properly? Should it be word? <gasps> this could be it. Yeah, like that, but I think it's word. Could it be? God, I hate how bad. I hate how bad the documentation is for Nowism. How did I even find that? I guess I'll just have to remember that. Oh, hello, Miko Pakeli. Used to do A86 assembly. You need to tell your stories, I'm sorry. Okay, is this gonna work? I don't like that. I don't like how it hung there. That doesn't make me happy. Okay. I have a feeling I definitely have messed up with my stuff here. So at the start, I subtract eight from the base pointer. Then I move the base pointer to the stack pointer. I think that's right. Then at the end I add it and then I put the stack pointer back. And that seems reasonable to me. Is it not reasonable? Oh no. 
that sounds like a lot of fun, especially with memory addresses. You know what, I'm going to undo the change there where I just constantly wait for stuff. Because it turns out I do need a server that just sticks around for testing. Okay, I don't like that hang. And I'm not sure why it hangs. I guess it's just going to crash anyway, because my thing. I'll stop testing the ping there. Um, the stack grows downwards is a lie that I seem to be telling myself. But is it true? Probably not. The thing is... I feel like I should be moving. Should it be plus six? I think that's what I should be doing there, right? I'm getting confused. I'm asleep at the wheel. Yeah, so that's failing to jump back. Okay. So we have our stack pointer. Um, what we should be doing is subtracting. I'm assuming that stack pointer equals base pointer, but that might actually be wrong. So that's, and then since the stack grows downwards, We probably want to add when, where, I think. Yeah, add is forward in memory. That seems reasonable. So we move the stack pointer down. Move the, move the stack pointer into the base pointer. Then we want to move the base pointer into the stack pointer. No, the stack pointer. The but yeah, base pointer into the stack pointer. Then add that. So this should work. I think I thought about it for more than no time at all. Um. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it worked. Thanks for the follow. I'm gonna try and stream more regularly. I've been busy working on other projects. Okay, let's try invoking an error there, kind of. Okay, so I figured that out and we have some local variables. That's fancy as heck. Yeah. So we have some variables there. At the start we do packet line buffer. So over here we should be moving AX into BP plus zero and the length, which is DX into that. Um, we can actually just move it there, can't we? You don't need to do anything weird with putting it in DX. Okay. And so over here, we need to do the opposite where we move AX we're not even using it there. 
uh, but we should be moving the line buffer position out, which should be move AX word BP plus four. Um, and then, yeah, it resets it there. Okay, so let's see how much that breaks. A. It hung. Didn't even, this is not good. So that's hung there, and that's happened before. I think when it fails to quit, it's actually corrupting the stack somehow. Okay, so that seems to actually work. Keyword seems. We do W make, we do W make. We can run the bot again. All right, but if we run the bot and have it fail, does that corrupt everything? So now let's try running WMake. Okay, so being unable to connect to it actually does cause the bot to crash and ruin DOS. That's not very charismatic. Let's also change this to plus two. Um, so if we fail to connect, why is it crashing? Why would it take down DOS? We don't even run any assembly stuff, do we? Hang on, let's go. Yeah, if we can't set up the socket, then for some reason it just fails. Um, wait, it doesn't say anything about the host there. Unable to connect to host. I don't know. That's, I think my solution there is going to be Vim is pretty cool. I like Vim. Uh, I got stuck with it years and years ago. Okay, so that's not a good sign. We should be seeing some text there from the packet. Oh, did I recompile it? Yeah, so we should see some text there from the packet, but we're not. The I moved, oh no, <laughs> I overwrote AX immediately. Um, actually, what we're going to do here is wrap this in a dirty try uh, um, loop and just have it so it prints. There, let's try that. There, so that's. Is it as E? What the fuck happened there? Null assignment detected? How? Oh boy. So that hangs if we do that. And it's not even reading the correct shit. Okay. I'm sure there's a simple explanation for this. I'm using the wrong address. 
that might be a simple explanation. Now, if I hit Alt X, it's having a hard time cleaning up, isn't it? No, it's not. It just takes a while. And it takes a while to clean up the socket for some reason. Because the exception Okay, that's kind of weird. So my program was crashing before. All right, so now we have variables. That's pretty exciting. Um, okay, so what next? Obviously, we need to start handing out bits. No, we're gonna have to use a buffer. Yeah, that's what we were doing. Uh, this is so much code. I also learned that like, IOC uses CRLF. Is that true? So when we do a send line, um, we should add some new lines there. I don't know why I needed to W make that. Okay. Unable to send line. Oh. My test was broken. Okay. Now I need to quickly confirm that that is actually the case by Googling this ICU's um, CRLF. Um, does Twitch use that? Okay, so it says they are delimited by RN. Interesting. Well, I think I have about another 45 minutes in me. So let's see if we can get this buffering done. So let's see, we have the variables. Um, we have the position and the length. Four is the remainder. Six is the remainder. Four is the position. So, what we need to do is um, move um, al byte. Hang on, we need to. I gotta be right back. One second. I gotta 
P hard. All right, back. So we have pointers and we have lengths. And so what we want to do is copy the minimum of either length. So we have the, we're going to have to grab two registers and pick the smallest. Say like a max instruction, all right, not clamp, but uh, max or min. Actually, no, we can probably do this easier. Um, so we have move AX and the AX is going to be um, line buff RAM, which is six. And this is going to be a packet RAM, which is plus two, I believe. Okay. And that will be in BX. And then what we will do is if compare greater than AX BX, we want to, we, can we do a conditional thing? Conditional. Oh, we don't have conditional moves, do we? Um, we'll have to just do a jump then. Do I have conditional jumps? I guess we have to use com compare and jump. So let's do compare AX BX. And then we want to jump if it's greater than or equal to. So let's find where J A E is defined. Jump. Okay, so compare what are the operands to compare? Does that just set a register? What flags? Compare zero. Um, got this documentation. All right. Subtracting the second operator from the first operand. Okay. 
Okay, so one of those is going to be bigger than the other. Um, it doesn't really matter which, but we have to pick the smallest one. So compare AX, BX. Um, so it subtracts BX from AX. So that's um, compare equals AX minus BX. And then the result should set a flag. Um, overflow direction flag. Let's see what the actual like jump equals. Jump if above, not below or equal. <coughs> so we want to jump if below. Okay, let's just try writing this down. If AX is less than BX, so it should be like if BX greater than AX, um, then AX equals BX. No. We want to pick the smallest one. If AX greater than BX, then AX equals BX. And then we want to do... Um, move AX into BX. And so here we want to decide, um, we want to see, we compare AX and BX, and we want to jump if the result, this is a, a subtraction, so AX minus BX. If BX is bigger, then AX will be negative. If AX is bigger, then it will still be positive. So if AX is positive, then we want to um, set it to BX. Raise that file. Jump if greater than. So actually we want to jump over this. So we probably want to do, um, if the result is zero or negative, jump if zero or negative. Jump if below or zero. See, it has equals. I guess, yeah. So we're just gonna do compare here. And then we wanna say jump if AX is smaller than BX or equal to BX. Wait, oh, I hate numbers so much. Okay, so we have AX and BX. So you wanna pick the smallest value and we pick the smallest one. Um, if BX is smallest, so compare AX and BX, we want to jump. Ah, oh, shit. This is so trivial, but my mind is just blanking out. Okay. We have AX and we have BX. 
if bx is smaller than ax, then we want to set it to bx. Sorry, we want to set ax to bx, which is this line here. We only want to run this line if bx is smaller than ax, which means we want to jump if it's greater than or equal. Can I do that? That seems reasonable. So we compare AX and BX. If AX is greater than BX, then we jump over it. If AX is greater than BX, then we want B, then we, okay, if AX is greater than BX, what do we want? Closing my eyes, trying to meditate here. If AX is greater than BX, then we want BX. So this should be less than. So if AX is less than BX, we're going to skip setting it to BX. Um, Okay, yeah, variable. Um, X smaller. Okay. So we have BX, if BX is smaller, okay, but then we have AX smaller. So I should have just written these two things here. So if AX is smaller, we jump less than, right. That would have saved so much time. So the next thing we want to do is copy bytes from line buffer plus line buffer RAM. I've got email. Nice. I like email. Okay. So you want to copy bytes from line bu buffer then decrement line buffer RAM. No, we're going to read byte from packet buffer plus packet buffer RAM. No, minus packet buffer. See the remainder doesn't work here if I don't know the size. There should be packet packet buffer pause and then packet. We're going to replace rem with end. Okay. What? Okay. Line buffer end. But then we can't compare them. Ah, okay. Uh, 
This is difficult. Maybe I shouldn't be using like the actual offsets there. Hmm. So we have the position and we have the remaining position. And we set the remainder. So we should be kind of able to dead reckon using this. So we will read the byte from packet buffer. Yep. If it's N dispatch. Terminate plus dispatch. Terminate plus print. Okay. So do terminate line buffer. If it's n, um, go to state null terminate. If packet RAM is zero, quit. If line buffer rem is zero, sorry, if line buffer rem is zero, quit. If packet rem is zero, quit. No, right, if packet rem is zero, go to state get packet. Otherwise, we want to Increment both pause, decrement both RAM. Should I increment the pause when I'm reading? Read byte, increment packet buffer pause. Decrement packet buff remaining. If it's N, go to state null terminate. If line buffer rem is zero, quit. We can just do that at the start. Yeah, so should probably do those checks before reading. So this is going to be our loop. We should probably move stuff into registers here.
Okay, so we have this copy loop here. Um, hmm. So we'll do that. So the issue here is that when we do a go to there, we're not flushing the current. Um, read byte from packet buffer pause. So packet buffer pause, we're gonna need four registers here maybe. Although, I'm not sure. Maybe we could use the offset thing there, like BP plus um, something. Like the remaining is actually kind of the inverse. Um, so I'm not sure how that would work. I guess we could just I don't know, not copy backwards, that wouldn't work. Hmm. Little registers. Line buffer RAM is zero. So that's the remaining. That's like the CX register. Um, so we could maybe use that. Let's look at the registers. AX, BX, CX, DX. And we have SI and DI. So AX, BX, CX, DX. Let's quickly check out what addressing we can use. So. We're not going to have a displacement. So that's the um, segment, that's that. And we want to use a doubled index, I think. BX, SI, BP, DI. Uh, that's not great. I mean, we could always just stash BP. BX, SI, and DI, BP, SI, BX, SI, BP, DI.
that's still the remaining. So are those just general use things? So SI and DI and no, we have four register main registers, don't we? So when we We want to read a byte and increment the pointer and decrement something else. So increment read increment pointer plus decrement something else. Is there an instruction for that? Let's look through the manual. Add and bound call. So possibly using deck. So let's go back to our code deck. Let's enter procedure entry. What? Escape. Increment. Move past the jumps. Not less. Lods. That's looping. We don't want that. Move mal neg or Oh, there's, there's rep there. Um, repeat string operation roll equal all zero. Probably not yet. We want to consume something. DOS. It could be STOS.
Let's look at stars. Okay, I guess we'll have to look that up. Stars copies a byte from ALX to memory. Okay, and that decrements, right. So that's probably what we wanted. So we want to use lords and stars. Where's my file? So lods and then we decrement the remainder. I mean, that seems like the simplest way to do it for me. Um, does it only use AX or whatever? Okay, so it uses DI and what does lots SI probably. So we probably want to use SI Move SI um, BP plus two. Uh, sorry, BP plus zero. Um, packet pause and move DI. BP plus four line buffer pause. And then AX can be a line buffer. So let's load all that junk into registers. And then if we have to go somewhere, we will have to flush it out of registers. But that should just mean something like um, lods. Is it just lods? Lods B. Yeah, so it should be lods. What about moves? Oh yeah, we can just move that instead. D S S I E S D I. So moves. Oh, we don't have any. So moves SB, then we decrement AX and DX. And we'll just copy the new line. But we're not able to check it. Um, 
Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll have to just do loads. Loads SB decrement AX compare N. Star SB decrement DX. Oh, that should probably be BX. Um, loop. Wait, where does loads put stuff? Loads puts it in. Where does it put it? Where does loads load shit? A? Yeah, A. AX. So these cannot be AX, they must be BX and CX. Um, and then we store it, decrement BX. Um, and then we also need to check if the remainder, um, if BX equals zero, um, quit if um, quit no flush you don't need to flush anything if CX um, flush line buffer uh, pause and remainder Hmm. We could just flush it after each time. Hmm. This might just be better for me to do it this way. Okay, so BX equals zero, quit. So compare BX zero. Jump equals. Jump not equals to gonna jump not equals to um, check line buffer. RAM, sorry, check packet RAM. Wait, we already know. No, we don't. What 
is this doing up here? This, this append line where we're calculating which is smaller. Um, we don't need to do that, do we? Because we're doing that each step. So we compare it, if it's BX, um, then we will check. So this is check packet rem. Check line buffer rem. Move AX hmm. I guess we'll move seven there. I don't know what my error lines are. If there's no packet remaining, ah, this looks kind of bad code actually. Um, because we had the prelude where we um, bring everything into registers and now we're going to have to oh no we can flush them there although we do need to flush them down here anyway I think no actually we don't need to flush We just have AX and the length. So we check the packet remaining. And if it's zero, then we want to flush the line buffer position. Then we want to jump state get packet. Um, and if there's no line buffer remaining, we want to just quit That seems like it might actually work. Let's try and review this a bit. So when we get to state append line, we bring stuff into registers. Then we do a copy loop. 
where each time we check if the packet remaining is zero. If it is, it flushes the position and remainder um, and then jumps to state get packet. Um, otherwise, it will check if there's stuff remaining in the there's space remaining in the buffer. Otherwise, if not, it'll just jump to do copy. If it it'll quit with seven if we run out of buffer. Otherwise, it'll load from source index decrement bx compare it. If it's equal, then it will just jump over here. Um, and that way we can move Yeah, so we have BX and SI here. So what we should actually do there is BX and SI. We will have to calculate remaining. Uh, but for now, we'll just move five to that. And we will retain So right now, we'll just say we reread, you know, a five line. And then for BX, we'll move in, I think it's DI, but we will have to save that too. And the packet position. Let's just save that and let's remove all this stuff. And let's try referencing the base pointer explicitly. Compare base pointer plus packet pause is uh, packet remain is two. Compare base pointer plus six is the packet remaining, I think. Sorry, line buffer remaining. And then we want to move word move ax word bp plus i think it's zero yeah um decrement bx sorry we want to decrement word bp plus zero sorry increment at and decrement word bp plus two compare it and then we do move word bp plus zero. Sorry, we move ax to bp plus four. Increment four, decrement plus six. And then we never need to 
try and mess with that. Let's see if that compiles. Probably won't. Uh, BX and SI. So BX would be BP plus four, I think. And SI would just be five. Um, and then it would jump back to state append line. Okay, whatever. Let's see if this even compiles. Ninety and ninety-four. So you need to put a thing there too. Got it. All right. Let's see if this works. Um, that didn't crash everything, but it also didn't print our stuff. Hmm. Huh. Okay, that's a little bit of a curveball because I was expecting that to crash horribly. Um, but it did not. Might be debugger time, maybe? This is going to hang because for some reason it's freezing if it fails. It seems like it's able to send the packets, but it seems like it's not printing the packets. So let's try and read through this and see if we can understand what's happening. So is it running? state get packet. It would have to if it's getting the message of the day and it's writing that it's receiving all these packets. Hmm. So it is getting packets. So what happens when it gets a packet? Um, it could disconnect or it could compare it. And if there's nothing in the line, if there's nothing left in the line buffer, then it would jump back to, if it's nothing left in the packet, then it would jump back. Hmm. So this should never be true.
I should be not jumping. I should be jumping to state quit there. So does it actually get to terminate here? Let's start doing some quits. So we just added some quits and we'll see where it quits. RC9. So it gets to do copy. Okay. Why is there a jump to st Okay, yeah, I know I put that there. Do W make there. Okay, so it gets to there and then it must jump back to the start of copy loop. Why does it take so long to close that connection? Oh shit, it doesn't. It doesn't. It times out. So RC10 there. I forgot to W make it. You know, let's actually edit our TTF, our DOSBox configuration to use output TTF. There, as a treat. So that doesn't quit at all. Shit. That should be a bite. Is that going to work? Move a L. Yeah, I'm vegan. What's up? Doing some DOS programming. Why is it never comparing to A? Am I a dummy? Zero A is new line. It reads A. It writes the A. I put the vegan tag on my Twitch because I'm like, could be cool. Let's see how it goes. Um, so it must be trying to get more data out of the packet. Nice. You doing any vegan stuff? So this is looping forever. Vegan swole, I'm not swole. Um, 
I know there's the vegan bodybuilders. Um, I got to run to here. Um, and then we've got to step into. Yeah, I've been vegan for a while. It's pretty good. It's a DOS Twitch bot. So DOS is this really old thing and that's why it looks like BIOS. And I'm trying to make it connect to the internet and talk to Twitch. And I, I don't know why I got this idea. But it's, it's the idea that I had. Okay, so we're here. What is AL? A is 73A0. All right, so let's run again. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. What is going on there? Why is AL doing that. Okay, let's look at our windows, data, stack, show us our stack. Okay, so, oh, this is such a headache. Oh, it tells me there. So that's A7. So 3C80. So that should be in the packet. So let's do window data memory at 232 3C80. Um, this is not where it should be. Oh, full stack. What kind of, uh, what kind of stuff are you doing with that? Are you new to programming? Uh, window close. How do I close a window? Okay. CPU registers. We have BP 3C80. That's actually pretty good that it aligns there. That makes it easier to read kind of. Um, so that's 3C80 would be packet position. Oh, this is mostly C++ um, and assembly and Python. Um, what do you plan on doing? Um, full stack. I think that's usually referred to as web development. Eighty seven, three, eight, seven, one B, uh, two B, A six, one F A. Oh, so what kind of frameworks do you know? One FA, that should be 512, 506. Uh, okay. New types 1B, that's 27. I guess that makes sense. Um, 2BA6, React and Node.js are probably the best. Those are the two very popular ones at the moment. Um, last time I did web development, I think it was the LAMP stack um, with Linux and the Apache and the MSQL and the PHP. Uh, but the world has since moved on to JavaScript. Okay, so let's look for a DS two B A six. 
are you? Let's just see how this plays out. Oh, it crashed. I don't like that. Anyway, something is clearly wrong. I have screwed up somehow and I am ashamed. So BP plus two is the packet remainder BP plus zero increment word. Oh, 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 this is really strange. Okay. I think I'm, I need to double increment this. Um, so I see what I'm doing wrong. Um, pointers. Um, so decrement word decrements the stack increment word increments the stack. Um, but it's just not dereferencing it. So let's see. Let's do move a X byte BP plus no wait word BB plus zero byte a X probably make that BX. Move byte BX. Okay, hang on a second. I think I've fixed that part, but this part is still broken in a very strange way. I've spent time looking into learning React, but I just haven't really figured it out yet. Like, um, it looks pretty cool. It has JSX and stuff. The Mern stack. Mongo express react node. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I like react the idea it has here where you make um, your own kind of elements that you kind of template. It's pretty good. Um, I, I haven't used MongoDB. I haven't touched. What haven't I used from here? I haven't used MongoDB. I've heard of Express and I've messed a bit. I haven't touched Node, but I know that um, the main advantage you get from combining all of those is that you have a single language for client and server side. And thus you can share logic, which is really cool. That's, that's the dream. All right, so we need to move BX plus four and then we need to move the byte to bx okay i think that's correct valid register specification size no no you can't do that Oh, I need to dereference that, I think. I think I'm confused here. See, one thing I like about modern day development is that there's answers if you Google them, um, but not on the internet. Invalid effective address. Okay. This have to be SI. This might have to be DI and SI. Oh, this might actually work. Let's see. Okay, we got to RC8. 
Yeah, this is Vim. Um, I've used Vim for my text editor um, forever, and now I'm stuck with it. Um, oh, it's frozen. Why do you freeze? Don't freeze, buddy. Um, yeah, that's true. Using Vim does feel kind of cool. I think VS Code has a Vim thing. Uh oh, SpaghettiO, we have a problem. It's hanging. Why is it hanging? Not like this. Not like this. Um, it shouldn't be hanging. You know what? Let's just not try and write memory at the moment. Um, Um, and let's subtract from SI um, BP plus two, I think, or is it six? Yeah. So that might actually work. Lots of mites here. All right, so that's hanging. Hmm. This should like fail. If it doesn't find an end to the line, it should be quitting. Yeah, I do weird things and I'm like the only person on the internet that does them. Probably because they're bad ideas. All right, so that kind of fixed things a little bit. Um, so we move SI. Maybe we need to move it to BX. So we move the word at BP plus zero, which is packet position. Then we move the byte from that to AL. And that freezes for some reason. Um, something to do with this printf, I'm sure. Um, let's comment that out. Um, Cause that printf looks sus as hell. And I think I've messed that up. Um, it doesn't run off a disk yet. Right now it's just running in an emulator. It might run off a disk. I do plan to put it on like a small computer, but I have to fix that computer. State of hand line. Something here is messing up the stack. 
and it is sad. Um, that's actually a pretty good question. Um, uh, it's a blurry difference. Uh, questions are good. I like questions. Um, there's not really much difference. VMs emulate some stuff. Um, but the difference is that oftentimes a VM will piggyback on the host and like use the host CPU and actual hardware. Okay. So something, I get some spaghetti there. Like, um, if we search up, um, uh, virtualization, let's see if this is on Wikipedia. So the difference is the difference between emulation and virtualization. And it's kind of weird. Um, the main difference you'll probably get is speed because virtualization has hardware assistance in order to go fast. So you could emulate a CPU, like you could have a program that runs the CPU like DOSBox does. It goes through all the instructions in memory and runs them one after another. Um, however, VirtualBox or something actually asks my host CPU to run them, which is much faster than, you know, kind of indirectly running them. Does that make sense? So like, um, the difference with virtualization is kind of running code um, in a situation where it has fake hardware that's emulated compared to just full emulation. Let's skip the copy part here. And let's skip the null termination. Yeah, so there's always buffers using the communicate, um, but No, emulators do it too. There's always buffers, but I think what you're thinking of is power virtualization. Um, where there's special drivers to, let me see if I can find it. So you have a CPU that runs code. Um, like, but you also have all the peripherals and stuff like a video output and the hard drive and things like that. So you can emulate those or you can create a little driver or something. You can make some virtual custom hardware that just uses a buffer that passes it to the host and that's faster. So with QMU, the parallel, the, um, fast thing is, uh, vert IO. Can I find anything with images? No, I guess not. I'm sorry. Um, basically, yeah, the difference between emulators and virtualization is just the degree of how much is being run on the host directly on the bare metal hardware and stuff that is being run by software. So a really good example of this is, um, if you've tried to run a 3d game in a virtual machine, um, it's probably a terrible experience. Like it's slow because it emulates a graphics card. 
However, you can pass the graphics card from your host PCI to the virtual machine and then it will run really fast because you're not emulating the graphics card anymore. You're just passing it through. All right, what have I done here? Not smart stuff. Um, Debugging DOS kind of sucks. Debugging assembly kind of sucks. Okay, so that kind of like, it's just printing a bunch of stuff, but it's not freezing now. So I think by sheer luck, we may have found part of the issue. So, If line buffer remaining is zero, it will get the packet. So let's just try doing that and then doing the, no, we'll just do the copy loop. Okay. That seems to be kind of working. Um, we'll skip the null termination. It's still not printing stuff, but rest assured, we will get it to do that. Let's try doing the actual comparison in memory. Uh, one example of virtualization, not emulation is containers on Linux. Uh, because it doesn't emulate anything, but it virtualizes resources like the file system. I don't always say 20. That's actually called OS virtualization. Um, and I think BSD has it as jails. incoming the main advantage with virtualization is that um, it's less of a black box like with Linux containers containers take really small amounts of space because the host knows about what's running in it um, so like if you run a tiny application in a container, it will just use like the small amount of stuff it needs. But if you run like a Linux virtual machine, you need to upfront say you have a gigabyte of memory and you have a gigabyte of storage. And so, you know, if it uses less than that, then you pay too much. Okay, so something has gone wrong here. So let's just try not writing this stuff. So we actually do have the correct lengths and stuff now. So it must be here that's messing things up. So we move. Yeah, 
Yeah, so Docker and I think it's Kubernetes, even though it's called Kuben K8 or something, um, those are pretty good. They're very useful in order to like um, ship all the dependencies and services and stuff in a single image. Um, one thing that's kind of hell on any operating system is getting things to use the right dependencies as the developer and by packaging them all together, um, you don't have to worry about that anymore. And it's so good. What, what is this code here? Yeah. Um, do you use like Windows or Linux for development or something? I think if Windows has like a Linux subsystem now. What if I be naughty and switch these around? Does that break the program? Dual booted and kept Windows for gaming. That's a pretty um, good option. There's also virtual machines. Linux runs really nice in a virtual machine. Um, this is actual, actually a virtual machine. Um, I just have a virtual machine for programming on stream because my usual setup is a bit like confusing and stuff. Um, it also means I can do like weird stuff like uh, break my system. Okay, yeah, that's definitely not correct. Why is it? Okay, let me just think about this. Is it accidentally I spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti? And then I think it's overriding the stack or something. Oh, this is, this is a little bit hell, but I will, I will kind of figure this out. So we get the value at base pointer plus four. We then move our byte to where that value is. I think, but it looks different to here. It looks like I've flipped it around. It, it looks like, um, hang on, let's use BX here. Is that the issue? Registers can be really strange. No. So it also freezes. So is it freezing because I'm reading that? Or is it freezing because I'm writing somewhere? No, it's definitely freezing because I'm writing, but if I don't write, then it will not display the last thing correctly, unless that's like random memory. Is that random memory? No, if I do this, hmm. I get the memory address. Um, what does increment do? I think that increments it in place. 
I'm going to assume it does. All right, we're going to have to open up the, the debugger of Doom. Okay. Um, run the cursor. Um, trace into, and then we want to go down to wherever this code is. I think around here. Run the cursor. Okay, so we have our base pointer, which is at 3C80. Uh, let's move BX. Okay, what just happened there? All right, window, data, stack, 380, so 3C84, 2B57, and that moved BX into it. And then Did I just remove code from there? Oh, I did. I'm not the smartest tool in the shed. Um, can I find code? Um, code functions. Does it have the symbol for do copy? ASM run. What is happening with these weird fonts? Hang on a second. Okay, let's just run until ASM run. All right, let's go down to here. Um, and then we will run to cursor. Yeah, something's, uh, I think what comment or whatever is loading some cute fonts or something, but the TDF mode doesn't have them. Okay, so let's see, data, stack. So 04BP should be at 2B77, great. Um, that's the address in memory. And so if we go to data memory at um, 2B77. We see there's just junk there. Um, and above it is the packet buffer, I suppose. Kind of confusing what that is doing there. Um, but what, okay. So it's space down. Move SI 0200. Oh, what? I'm in the wrong place. Wait a second. This should be move BX line buffer. Or it should have been. Let's try again.
Hmm. I accidentally clicked Firefox. Why are the buttons so small? I guess buttons being too small isn't the issue. All right. So that's good. We're not just seeing random memory. That would explain why we saw random memory before. Um, great. So it's still this area here where something is going wrong. Hmm. Am I overriding? Am I like truncating this pointer? Maybe? Move byte AL. No. I need to specify that. that's a word. I'm going to open up the debugger again. So should I put word here? Okay, we're going to use the debugger because this is getting a little bit confusing and I think we already have this nearly finished. Holy cow, it's been five hours. That's not good. Okay, wdbot. Um, let's go to code functions ASM run. Yep, we want to break that. Just think, when I have a bot, I will have it be able to do uptime. Maybe. Probably not, actually. <laughs> I've kind of been working on this since 2019, so... It's still... We're getting there. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to do uptime. That would probably involve, like, HTTP requests. And that's, I'm not doing that. Yes, very close. All right, so let's run to here. So what do we have? BX, 2B56, okay. 
So it's 2B56 there. And it sets that at the start over here. Yeah. Cool. Um, I have, I have a feeling this is related to it being in the wrong segment, but I won't worry about that for now. So let's see, 2B56 is goes to BX. And then, yeah, it sets 2B56 to A. Um, then it set it to 4D. Oh, it was A and now it's 4D. So data, memory at DS2B56. It seems like it's set the memory. So let's just um, run the cursor. It's writing it into memory. So this is actually working. And then of course it fails. So what, what gives, why? Why is it not printing then? Is the length wrong? Are the arguments wrong? Why is it freezing? Let's go to state null terminate in a debugger. Actually, no, let's just move this from BSS to data. No change. Put a to do there. So I'm going to Hmm. So we take the length, we move the amount remaining. That seems fine to me, fine to me. So the only thing I can think of is that like we're overflowing the line buffer or I've messed up with printf. So let's go to, um, Do we have an earlier version of this? Let's check here. Drive C code bot hello.assembly. Let's try and copy that and open that and see what has happened. AD, AX, DX, print format, AX, DX, AX. DX, SI, print format, pop. Pop AX, DX, AX. Uh, I think it would be AX, SIBX. Yes, that seems fine. Hmm. 
whatever. That's why we have a debugger. Um, code functions, ASM run. Um, yep. Okay. Um, run, go. Let's find the fart part where it prints um, and go up a bit. We want to find where it moves. Yeah, so here. Run tracing to. So we have a. Oops. I want to run to cursor. Run, run to cursor. All right. So we have BX. SI and word pointer BP. And then we set that to zero. All right, so let's look at memory at BX. There's nothing there. This is a turn of events, I'll tell you that. Um, Um, let's see, window, CP registers, BX is at 2B56. All right, let's try running again. Oh. Okay, let's go back to source. Assembly, okay. So we want to run to here. Run to cursor. Okay, so let's see. Window. Data. Memory at, and it should be at BX. Sorry, memory at um, 2D77. at data memory at 2D77. What is on my stack? 38, 3C84, 2D77. Um, and I think zero is 6D88. Is that the packet? The line buffer is um, the fourth element. So 1D, what? Do we need to go up in the stack? 80, that's remaining, packet remaining. That's the line buffer, 2D77. And there is nothing there. Hmm. But I saw it copying before. Okay, well, let's try finding this manually. Okay, so we're back here and this is where we copy stuff and let's run to the cursor. And let's do memory at 3C86. Uh, it would be Um, A1C1, I think. What's my stack at? Let's 
do memory at BP BP plus four. Okay, so I can't do that. Um, how do you close a window? Window options. Okay, it's not helpful. Um, data. Stack. Data. Registers. BP is at 3C80. Um, we go up, up, up. The line buffer would be 4, which would be 2D57. So now if we go to memory at 2D57. And let's just move the cursor. Am I good at the narration? I'm not too sure. Um, let's see. We're going to render the cursor. Yep, so it is writing to 2D47 there. Welcome to the test server. 21 OD. All right, so next, if we go over here, oh, that's pretty good. I got my keyboard and everything here. So let's run to the cursor over here. So this should jump. If I can hit space, jump. It does not. Why does it not do that? Um, data window registers. What's in AL for F? That's a little weird. It shouldn't be there. What? Did it just delete all my memory? What? What just happened? What? 3C82. Did I, have I forgotten where I am? One F zero 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 one one F D six D B nine three C eighty six D B nine. All right, something has gone terribly, terribly wrong here. Unless I can't really read well unless I'm confused but I don't think I'm confused for once I feel like I'm I feel like I am definitely correct here 6db9 how did you get to 6db9 there that doesn't seem correct at all the disappearing memory <laughs> yeah um, so it's set to 2D59 now, and then it loads 6DBA, uh, 2D59, is that where it is? Yeah, so 2D59 is where it should be, but it's decided that it's going to write to 6DBA. This is not what I want. Um, okay, so jump if it's equal to that. So BX is currently equal to 2D59. A. 
and 2D5A. Okay, so it's writing over the correct place now. Your sysadmin is Jukia, yeah? I think. That sets that to zero D. Sets it to zero D again. That's not a good sign. Or maybe I was just misunderstanding that. Okay. So for some reason there, it decides that the new address is no longer 2D49, it is 6DD7. Okay, so what is it trying to print now? It should be printing 2D56. So let's see, what is in our registers? 2B56? Uh, hmm. can see why it's getting a bit confused because I am confused. How did it get over there? So it should be two Okay, okay. Two D five six, two D five six. Can we look in the linker here? I've closed my folder. I have to have my folder. Okay, so we have our map. Let's see, um, line. Is this the correct file? Bot dot map. And so at the bottom of the bot dot map, We have line buffer. Okay. Okay, whatever. So this says 2D56 there. And then down in the file, it's saying 2B56.
Does this happen with the line buffer position? So up here, two D five six zero two zero zero. And then if we scroll down, two D five six zero zero. Oh, that's actually correct, I think. Maybe. No. Two D five six. Four four five three. Two D five six. Two D five six. Two D five six. Okay, we're going to restart this program from the beginning. So let's see. Two D five six twenty. Oh. I don't actually need line buffer pause. That should just be line buffer. Have I been completely wrong this entire time? Oh, that seems to actually work. That's surprising. Let's try moving this to BSS. Okay. I think we've done it. Let's see. I have some code here that specifically stops it from splitting stuff up. Let's remove that and see if it splits it up properly. It does. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. 
Let's count the numbers though. Ping. Welcome to the test server. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, that looks correct. So I think we've done some line buffering in DOS. That's pretty cool. Let's look back at our code. So this is some kind of, I wouldn't say this is spaghetti code. Yes, you have witnessed a quest completion. Um, let's do a bit of cleaning. Oh, this should, this is wrong. See, I should be sending stuff out with the lines like that. And that just immediately crashes my tests because, um, Okay, let's try that. There we go. That's pretty cool. I think the stream's gonna be over for today because it's way over time. But that's probably the most complicated thing I've ever programmed in assembly. Um, but I mean, it kind of makes sense. Thanks. Do you do any screaming? You should consider it. I'll give you a follow anyway. sick about thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lots of vegan stuff. All right. I'll see you later. Thanks for dropping by.